pass over to you now, Ronald. Uh, you're sitting out there in Kigali. K uh, Rwanda was not one of the case study countries for this work, but it, it is engaged in this changing landscape of, of financing for development. So how does it look from, from, from where you sit? So thank you very much for having me on this discussion. And uh, let me join the other speakers to thank the authors. I think they did a great job to put this together. It gives a platform for reflection look at the new landscape. I want to agree with most of the presentation uh, in, the, in the report. And um, probably with not repeating what um, other speakers have, have already um, thought. I uh, just wanted to emphasize that actually this presents us uh, an opportunity as an uh, income country uh, to look at different uh, sources of financing. Um, we used to have the traditional formulas, that was the only source of financing. But now I think the landscape is, is tilting to, uh, towards having a diverse, a diversified source of financing that could uh, potentially um, uh, uh, enable uh, low-income countries to actually have more resources to invest in different sectors. Look at traditional donors, as Matthew mentioned. I think more was to the social sector, education, health, and, and, and probably environment. But now, with the emergence of the non-traditional donors, we are able to mobilize resources that are going to productive sectors, infrastructure sectors would uh, catalyze uh, even economic growth further. So this balance of productive and non-productive uh, non sector, I think is going to offer a new momentum for our economic growth. So to me, I think it's really uh, something good that uh, uh, low-income countries uh, are happy to confirm. And I'm just going to see if we can do anything about it, Rob, or whether we're, this is a mm. Skype connection, and so we're a little bit <coughs> uh, hamstrung by bandwidth on the Kigali side, I suspect. But, and I, the more we put the volume up, I suspect, the more we get this interference, do we? Yeah, okay. Sorry, Ron, we are getting <coughs> you, but we're all having to absolutely be quiet because uh, <laughs> we, we don't want to lose everything that you say. Please go ahead. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you for, um, I try maybe to be, so that the transmission well. I was saying that uh, I agree with the recommendation most of the and uh, confirming that actually the new landscape finding more opportunities um, those that are not having natural It's getting worse, isn't it? And uh, it's giving us the, the connection's getting worse, I'm afraid, Ronald. We're we're really struggling at the moment. Um, we, what we might do is switch off um, the video this end and just hear your voice, and that will then this end. Sorry, and then that should maximise, hopefully. So you won't see us for a bit, but we are here. Which this end? You switch off your end. Sorry, you need to switch off the video your end, Ronald, and we'll just hear your voice. Uh, it is. Can you do that? There we go. Now. Is this better now? That's much yeah. better. I think it's better. Is it better now? Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Yeah, sorry for that. Um, as I was saying that uh, the report, most of the recommendations uh, 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 really resonate with, with what is happening around here. And uh, the new landscape is, uh, is giving us um, uh, flexibility to be able to access finance. Uh, that traditional donors to traditional finance actually. If you look at um, our productive sector, we are able to attract uh, financing to this sector, which was not the case under the traditional uh, 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 donor finance. They were more particularly claimed to education now, but with the mix now, we, we are optimistic. This is going to spur our economic growth and now, this brings, of course, another element of uh, change in the rules of the game. Uh, because uh, we were uh, playing with the rules of the by the yeah, which were more um, 
it is and complex and, and bring in other elements that are not necessarily about uh, um, active uh, financing and investments, but paint it to more broader uh, political and governance question. Chinese low income countries, uh, this is not giving them the opportunity, the flexibility uh, to do what they wanted to do uh, for uh, their economic growth. So, with the new landscape, we are seeing uh, increased countries tilting uh, 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 towards less uh, conditionalities in terms of investing finances. And of course, the other element is the renewed uh, partnership commitment to global development, as may be called Unibusan. I think it is also um, countries coming together, tradition and non tradition, though on different terms under the Sun Outcome document. But at least we see a kind of new momentum, a kind of new. Um, urge for countries to uh, collaborate together, to cooperate in order to help the alien and uh, in the low income countries uh, to, to develop. Um, what's the challenge on our side is, uh, is uh, to have the guidelines that, uh, are, that are going to help the low income countries to better deal with the new landscape. At least we have been able to formulate guidelines for traditional donors who have the policy have the other framework that, that permit us to deal with traditional donors. But uh, with the new landscape, I think we need to get the new set of uh, guidelines that are going to, uh, to help low income countries to benefit from this new landscape. Uh, of course, uh, I think Martin raised a very important uh, 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 point relating to uh, data sustainability. When countries have to uh, of course, there is this challenge of raw, uh, raw debt, raw development scenario, where countries are required, uh, particularly those under the hippie arrangement, uh, to contract less debt, but which could mean that you are not going to grow at the rate that you wanted to. But again, how do you balance that with making sure that the, 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 the concessional and the concessional resources you are contracting are going to remain under sustainable uh, levels? As a country. I think that's a challenge that the country is grappling with, and we are making sure that um, uh, it does not take us back to where we are for those countries that graduate, uh, that had the completion point of India. So I think that's a new challenge that we need to look at, of course, with some institutions like ODI, which could uh, probably come up with some kind of, uh, you know, guidelines or Sort of reflections that would help stimulate that kind of debate for low income countries to actually that how they can remain in the sustainable day. Uh, for the dialogue, again, we are seeing increasingly uh, for those non traditional donors, uh, given the recent Busan uh, HR4 uh, forum, we are seeing all non traditional donors coming up. Uh, to engage with the government, which was a little bit different before. Uh, we used to, we used not to have, for example, China or Korea or, uh, or even India coming in dialogue forums. But increasingly, we are seeing them uh, showing up in these dialogue forums and uh, taking part in the discussion, though on different uh, footing, on different um, um, uh, standing all together with the traditional donors. But at least that kind of Enthusiasm has been uh, shown, which which gives us a sense that there is a new commitment uh, to uh, help developing countries, least income countries, uh, uh, develop further. Um, for uh, post 2015, I think the challenge is going to be for low income countries to understand how do we maximize, how do we coordinate better in terms of uh, tradition and non traditional donors. How do we open it in the sense that we leverage what the traditional donors have done? We capitalize on that, we build on that, make sure that we have now non traditional can go on board and then facilitate our quick uh, uh, growth and then probably uh, eventually reduce uh, uh, what levels of country. And, 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 and maybe the report, one thing I, I, I found in the report was. Um, 
the reference to the fact that uh, the aid exit is not something widespread across uh, the countries that they have been visiting. But on the ground, we are getting a new sense of feeling that uh, people aren't ready to look at the exit, aid exit at a certain point in time. I don't know if it's in the five or 10 years or 15 years, but this that's something coming up in the discussion. Now, the question is how do we do that? Uh, still low income countries, you find that there's still, the foundation is still really very shaky in terms of the domestic revenue production, in terms of industries that are up and running, in terms of the poverty levels are still high. But, but there is a huge sense among low income countries that we need to find an exit strategy. So if we could, as partners, probably capitalize on uh, the new landscape and try to build on what traditional donors have done and try to coordinate uh, further on what the new partners or the emerging partners are doing so that uh, uh, the, the aggregate could help those countries to at least move to another level of middle income countries. That will, I think, uh, will be very um, uh, rewarding uh, 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 to countries in the South. So I think those are the kind of reflections I have, but I entirely agree with you. Thank you very much um, indeed, Ronald. And I think we, we did get a good percentage of that, um, but it is a slightly dodgy connection. So um, you might have to really speak up if you want to intervene in this next round of, of questions and discussion. Um, I was uh, reminded, actually, there's um, Dambisa Moyo, um, the, the author of that rather controversial book, Dead Aid, um, said very recently, what Africa needs is more economic growth and aid has very little to do with growth. Um, and what we've been hearing actually in this discussion is really interesting points about where some of these n newer flows, if you like, or these less traditional, or perhaps to use Matthew's corrective, DAC flows are going and which kinds of sectors they're heading to. And Ronald made the very strong claim that this was really uh, funding for productive sectors. Um, and is very much linked to this uh, bigger agenda about economic transformation and growth uh, I in low-income countries. And I wonder whether we are actually going to see a slight alteration of that observation that Danby Samoya makes, that actually many of the traditional flows who have continued that have continued to stay within certain sectors, that is actually now shifting, and that we might actually begin to eventually start picking up some rather different observations about the macro relationship between aid, if you like, and, and growth. Who knows? Anyway, I'm now going to open it up for questions, comments, and reflections. Um.